Should there be restrictions on attending religious services to stem the spread of the coronavirus? Well, not according to the U.S. Supreme Court. In a 5-4 to four ruling, America's highest court has just sided with religious organizations in a dispute over New York Governor Andrew Cuomo's bid to limit massive gatherings in houses of worship. This case is just the latest fight between religious groups who don't want to face any restrictions and city and state officials who are trying to prevent COVID-19 hotspots from popping up because of large gatherings. Well, joining us from New York to break this down is Algaminer Editor-in-Chief Do David Efune for the weekly segment, Bottom Line. So, David, we saw the shocking images of a mass gathering of ultra-Orthodox Jews in a secret Hasidic wedding in Brooklyn. This is just one of the issues that has triggered authorities to want to stem religious gatherings. But why are religious groups battling against these restrictions? Well, I think, first of all, it's important to differentiate between something like a wedding uh, and religious services, congregations, synagogues, and churches. Uh, certainly, uh, there are individual groups that have been acting in a way that you might call irresponsible. But the question over here is about the constitutional right of religious groups or faith groups um, to make decisions with regard to you know, the safety of their congregation, to be able to worship in a safe manner, um, but also with the freedom to do so and to maintain their, their congregations and, and to maintain their, their, uh, their way of life, really. The ruling contains some unusually critical language, saying that houses of worship face far more restrictive regulations and compared the city's decision to reopen liquor stores and bike shops, but shuttered churches, synagogues, and mosques. I mean, why do you think that is? In your opinion, is there a bias towards religious communities during this pandemic? There's absolutely no question that there has been a very clear double standard that's been employed. And that double standard has been in terms of rules that have been established and instituted, but also in terms of the language and the actions that we've seen from state and city officials here in New York. And these communities certainly feel that they've been singled out and persecuted. They saw, for example, masses of people gathered on the streets for the Black Lives Matter protest. They saw masses of people gathered on the streets to celebrate the election victory of Joe Biden, uh, and they, they see other institutions and establishments, whether, as you say, food stores, liquor stores, others being able to make their own decisions about how many people to allow inside the establishment. So obviously what they're feeling over here is that the decisions about what's important, what's not important, what's essential, what's not essential, are being decided by those that don't have a sensitivity to their unique perspective and their unique needs. And one thing that you know I've said before, but I think it's important to keep in mind, is that Orthodox religious people, whether they're Muslims or Jews or Catholics or Christians, are just as passionate and see as much importance in their way of life and their ability to worship freely as political uh, protesters, whether it's the Black Lives Matter movement or whether it's uh, supporters of Joe Biden, you know, feel strongly and passionately about their cause. Right. And for state city officials to be drawing the line and making those decisions, of course, is, is a constitutional infringement. And that's what the, the court ruled. Well, what does this latest vote from the U U.S. Supreme Court of Justice show about America's values? I mean, new conservative Justice Amy Coney Barrett seems uh, really to be making her mark here. Look, religious freedom in this country is a, is a bedrock. It's one of the key pillars of what the United States is all about. And, you know, when it comes to freedoms in general, um, it's easy to guarantee freedoms when there isn't much at stake, when, 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 it's, when there isn't, uh, you know, contradictory or conflicting or, or other concerns that are taking place at the same time. It's only when things are difficult, when things are tough, when things are hard, when, when there are challenges that need to be faced, that those freedoms really need to be protected. Uh, and I think, you know, there is a general consensus that we want to be responsible, that religious institutions want to be responsible. Obviously, there is a, a, a very high importance placed on the preservation of life in the Jewish religion and, and in other religions. Uh, that's, I don't think, what's in question here. The question is the right of the state and the city right. to dictate in very specific terms and to act with this clear double standard towards those faith communities. And, of course, they're going to be welcoming this judgment today.